point where America was just kind of getting hip to what anime is and being yeah. a, one of the original dub kings of things, were you a fan of manga early on? Or was this work stuff? Uh, that's very nice of you to say. No, of course. Um, I, let's see, being of the age that I am. We are. Uh, we are. Yes. We are. Um, I, uh, I, when I was little, the anime that was out, didn't know it was anime. Right. I just thought that it looked cool and it was different. Of course. And I could tell that it wasn't like a Warner Brothers cartoon or whatever right. else. I watched Battle of the Planets, Let's also known go. as G-Force. Let's go. Um, I watched Star Blazers, which okay. is Battleship Yamato. Yep. Um, my neck of the woods did not get Robotech, but Robotech would have been out <laughs> at that same time, too. So right. didn't watch it, was aware that it was a thing. Fair. Uh, and Speed Racer. Okay, all right. That's a, so, that's a good mix, though. And then when I got uh, a little older and I was into college... Uh, I loved the art house cinema. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm from Texas and I live in the Dallas area and I've been there a long time. Um, the art house cinema <clears throat> would have things like Vampire Hunter D okay. and Akia and things like that. Like, I've never seen this. Here's five bucks. Let me have it. <laughs> I want to go see it. No, I love it. I love yeah. it. Jeff, what about you? How did you first get involved with any sort of anime works? Was it. Um, we were actually just talking about it. I. Um, I I think Pokemon okay. was my first, and I was a little too old to like it at the time, right. but I did. Yeah. So I didn't tell anyone. No, that's fair. That's but fair. I would watch it and be like, "That is pretty cool. Yeah. I, li I like it." And I um, but then I didn't know about One Piece until Matt Owens, our uh, showrunner, who's a massive um, encyclopedia of, of One Piece knowledge. I told me to read the comic when we were working on a show called Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Hey! And, we were, uh, uh, and uh, we were working on that and he told me to read the comic and I read it and I loved it immediately. So that was, that was my first coming across One Piece. Nice, yes, yeah. nice. I feel like One Piece was like that hidden gem of a series because for as many volumes as it had, it wasn't super talked about here in the States or in the States where I'm from. I'm sorry, let me say not here. Um, like, was that true for you guys? I think the in the States is a key term there. True. I think globally, giant phenomenon, Star Wars, that. Star Trek combined level of a thing. Yeah. Uh, the U.S. Uh, took a little while for it to, to catch on. Why do we suck? What did we do? <laughs> Why didn't y'all tell us? Sometimes it just takes a while for the fair, U.S. to catch on. Fair, fair. There's just, you know... It's just now uh, become more acceptable. Like, oh, there's there's a bidet that I could just add to my <laughs> my my toilet at home. I want that. Clean. US is very slow on even being clean. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, but I uh, from having worked on the show, I started working on the series in 2007 -ish right. or so, um, and we did a whole bunch of it. And there was fandom out there. There was already fandom that existed. Mm -hmm. There was fandom waiting on our version of the dub, uh, and. It just seemed, like you said, it took a while. Right. I want to say, from my perspective, as far as going out and seeing a bunch of folks at events and stuff like this, I think it took until the pandemic. <laughs> True. To the Panda Express, yes. to the Panini happened. Yes. Uh, when everyone was at home, like, man, this thing's a thousand episodes long and I can't go anywhere. I got the Today's time. the day. Today's the day. <laughs> Gonna start it. Yes. Yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right. I think that's, that's very poignant to talk about how um, society and culture kind of have to happen sometimes for us to experience a phenomenon like One Piece, which is super duper important. As actors though, because you are adapting a character that already has a presentation before you, what did you want to do to add something nuanced for yourself in your portrayal? Go ahead, you, you were the first one. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, um, with my, uh, the way that I portray Buggy, mm -hmm. um, I listen to what the Seiyu is doing. Mm -hmm. It's always very important to me. Because I'm also uh, I'm a voice director. Of I course. have voice directed uh, a reasonable portion of that show. Right. It's too long for any one human being to do. So, but I've done a chunk of it. Um, I think it's very important that the chessboard mm -hmm. at least resemble the same chessboard. So, like vocally, if there's some texture on it, if it's deep, if it's that, if, or if it sounds like a small child or right. something like those things need to be adhered to. Like that's mm -hmm. part of the character along with the way they look. And especially for One Piece, with things out of my control, their own theme song, of course, the music that plays when they come out, all those sorts of things are part of it. So I try to make sure that 
the story that's being told in English is the same, and people from multiple languages can sit around with interpreters and talk about their favorite moments from the show, and someone's voice, and someone's specific laugh, and all those sorts of things, and they're like, it, everyone is watching the same thing. Right. So, with the way I approach Buggy, yeah, uh, uh, inspiration from the way that the manga is drawn, mm -hmm. inspiration from the way that the Seiyu performed it, and then what I see and hear on screen. That's brilliant. Like, you know, like, how big is the mouth? How big is the music cue? How big is the goofy little sound effect that they have when the joke happens? All those things kind of impact how I approach it, uh, along with what we've kind of decided of what, like, the core, the the main focal point of the voice starts from, and then can go any direction, and usually does, because One Piece, yeah. uh, as far as what's happening. That's brilliant. Make some noise for that, y'all, please. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. No, of course. Jeff, what about you? Super interesting. I right? was just like, wow, that's all super, that's cool. Um, I, I think it's uh, different a little for the live action in the sense that, is there like a... There it might be me, I was holding it weird. No, no, I think it's me. Um, but I, uh, I feel like um, when, because I think for you visually, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's the same. You know, and, and I think like for us, it was kind of, especially for me, like I was, I was completely unfamiliar with mm -hmm. One Piece. I had never heard of it. Right. <clears throat> and I think um, I read a little bit of the comic and I saw his entrance and uh, Matt and I wanted to do, we wanted to mirror the first time he's in the comic with his leg over the chair. Right. Um, we both thought it would be cool if that was the first shot of Buggy because uh, to mimic the comic, and I think um, I just had to try and find uh, a way to, I guess, because he's such a crazy. I saw what you guys were doing, and it's amazing, and I kind of had to filter that through um, what I felt like I could do, and I felt like uh, to me. The things that I really resonated with when I read him, so I was like, he's wildly insecure, yeah. which is very funny, <laughs> and he's also um, very uh, powerful, mm -hmm. and he's kind of this classic trope of a character because he's gotten this power sort of accidentally, mm -hmm. and he's way too powerful than he should be, <laughs> which it makes him so fun. And like, he kind of, um, I love that he faces people who are a lot stronger or smarter or generally better than him, mm -hmm. but he has good luck, which is kind of better than, it's better to be lucky than he good. The, he has the best luck. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, that to me is like such a fun, um, this guy can, can, you can see how scared of a little bullied boy he is, right. even in all of his like outbursts. Uh, you know, that's obviously where it comes from. Right. So it's just like I kind of was trying to figure out how a person like that could exist because live action is so difficult to translate because it can't be one for one. I think because right. it's just the medium so different. So it was really interesting, and I have to say, Matt. A shout out because uh, he knows these characters so well that he kind of lets me do my thing with it and then be like that's a little let's not go crazy <laughs> but um it's it's a very fun yeah it's a fun balance to find and i love that it's cool no that's awesome make some more noise for that yeah because oh. when you're when you're dealing with a character that has an established personality right and and you're supposed to kind of meet or match that um, there's a difference, I think, in terms of what you almost feel like you're allowed to do uh, because you're like, well, I have a standard. But specifically because, uh, Mike, you were dealing with more of a vocal performance and, and Jeff, yours had to be physical. Um, did you see like there was anything where you were like, I wish I could do something in either shoes where you, know, you would have wanted it to be a little bit more uh, physical um, because you know, there's so much fun there and then something that you would have loved to be like less physical <laughs> if you could? Uh, well, I had to do a lot of wire work right. and like a lot of um, all that, uh, like, uh, uh, and sometimes it's like crazy elaborate 
the most wild effects and like wires and harnesses and stunts and all this stuff. And then sometimes I'm like standing on a platform and like it, they lower me and it's like, <laughs> and it's like, like hard to, it's hard to be like, yeah, I'm a powerful, cool guy. <laughs> like, um, but it's, uh, it's really, yeah, I mean, of course, like, the freedom of what the animation provides in right. terms of, like, especially Buggy, like, with the, with what he can do. But I think we did a pretty cool job of absolutely. kind of, like, yeah, putting... Come on, that's right, make that noise, make that noise. Yes, yes that's all the, for the visual effects, yeah. like, that's all them, that. I mean, that is... It's, that's another cool collaboration, kind of, between me and the VFX guys, because they explain to me exactly what it's going to look like. Right. And I try to give them, and then I'm like, well, what if I do this, and... We, it's they're always everybody is very collaborative, especially because Buggy's a psycho. So <laughs> like, it's very um, I I get to I think the character lends itself to me kind of like getting to on the fly come up with things, nice. and Matt's very supportive of that. So that's like and even in the VFX world because they're gonna do it for the next like year. Right. So it's I can be like, can I do this? And they're like, yeah, we'll try. And then it ends up in it. It's very that's cool. awesome. Yeah, it's fun. That's awesome. Mike, what about you? Very cool. Um, as far as like wanting to do things differently or, mm -hmm. or et cetera, et cetera, um, part of my challenge and like the bulk of the work that I do, uh, working with ADR, working with anime, working with localizing something that uh, was created in another language, mm -hmm. um, we don't get to change the animation. True. So uh, the mouth movements, a pause in it, a long scream, another pause, and then four or five more, you know, things that may be something that's very fluid in Japanese with that delivery. Right. And then the adaptive writing team, bless them, <laughs> um, comes up with something that like, okay, someone would say it this way. Right. In, and Buggy, we're dealing with, you know, additional levels of psycho and whatever else. We can also make this work. Mike can make it work and uh, give me that. And uh, I will uh, preview it. I'll hear what the say you did. I'll see the timing of it. I'll see, okay, I kind of get the idea of it. I'll give it a shot. Um, it is my job to make whatever that looks like on screen to sound like that was my idea, mm -hmm. and that's what I would have done given freedom of performance. Gotcha. So um, my challenge is I don't have freedom of performance right. as far as timing, as far as what syllable looks good on the mouth shapes, but I gotta make it sound like this was 1,000% my choice. Um, and uh, I love that. Yes. I think that that is a fun challenge. That's amazing. Yeah. And like, I, the reason why I want to bring that up is because I want you guys to understand the level of craft. That, that is goes so into, hard. Right? That is amazing. Yeah. I was just thinking that the rhythm of speech, that that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that rhythm is still there, and I have to, you know, and everyone else does this particular thing. Like, you have to make that sound genuine from right. the heart. It still has to have impact. It has to go work with the storytelling. Um, and then, you know, just... Japanese vocabulary and stuff in general, lots of things in in vowels. So you know, like ba 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 ba, like there can't be most or something. Like, you know, you have, you, have, you have to find some way to get what, what it said to make sure that it looks really good with the animation. I love it. I love yeah. it. Uh, one of the key things is there anyone that wants to be an aspiring uh, voice actor in the audience? Um, that's the thing to remember again is that it's not about just making fun voices, but true acting and figuring out the craft of connecting uh, your voice to yeah. animation that already exists, and that's that's huge, absolutely huge. Um, you both have described Buggy as a psycho, and I think that's true. Um, well, I don't know. I would say that he's a bad guy, but just antagonistic. Would would you? <laughs> No, I agree. No, I'm a, he's not a bad guy. Yeah, he's, he's not a, a bad guy. He's, he's a sad. He's a sad guy. Right. So to to create a character who is so aggressively antagonistic, uh, but still fun, uh, what do you dig into to kind of bring that to life? Um, I would say I approach it from, uh, you know, Jeff mentioned some things earlier, the insecurity yes. and powerful and stuff like that. Um, I approach it from the standpoint of those things, and then I throw in ambition. Okay. Ambition drives him so hard. Huge. So uh, I want to be rewarded for doing almost nothing. <laughs> I, I want to achieve as much as I can and do as little as possible. That's right. That's right. Um, so all of his scheming, all of his whatever I think comes to that, I can play it moment to moment, as you should. You know, like this is what's going on. This is how I'm addressing and stuff like that. But at the core of it, it's like. How can I get first place in the world 
with barely doing anything or just like moving three or four pieces around and then you guys do everything and I take the credit, you know? That's, That's exactly, it's really, I've said this before, but I, the first time I read the manga, I was like, he's Richard the Third, um, the Shakespearean okay, okay, okay. meets Michael Scott. <laughs> and that was like the first time I, when I realized that, I was like, this is, yeah, no, no, no. Because <laughs> that's it's true. You gotta let that live for a second. Right? That's that's brilliant. <laughs> it's true. It's because like he's so. That's why there was kind of like a Shakespearean flair that I think I wanted to give to him because he's so. Um, he takes <laughs> he takes himself so seriously, <laughs> which is like that's why he's so sad because he's like <laughs> such a loser. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like he's so he's dead serious about and I totally agree like his ambition is what drives him so much and he it, it but what I and something I love about um I'm a big fan of the British office and I like the American office too and I think something that the, they in both cases they do a really good job with David Brent and Michael Scott respectively that they they always do these um, little flashes of him being a really good salesman. Right. Like, just like for a second, you know, they're yeah. like, they're like, oh, you sold like all this stuff or you did, you convinced this person to do this. And like underneath the buffoonery, there's a little bit of talent right. and a little bit of like, you know, and so like, that's what's so fun to me about Buggy because it's like, he's a sad loser, but like he is also... He's kind of good, yeah. and he's got this power that, like, he's just the dumbest <laughs> version of good. And, like, that is, you know, such a fun, it's such a fun mix, I think. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, I'm going to invite you guys to line up to ask your questions, but I'm going to ask one more. Um, sure. in, in the sense of seeing how One Piece has gained such a huge following that it started off with this brilliant, you know, manga that becomes this great anime that then goes into a state of live action. How proud are you of the audience that it's collected and kind of cultivated this fandom? Man, that fandom was there. I mean, yeah, absolutely. And it's so cool to know them. And yes. It's so cool to meet them. And uh, some of the most enthusiastic fans That's and fandom awesome. that I've come across. I love it. For sure. Yeah, I am... Um... Uh, you know, was was involved in a Marvel thing with, right. with Shield, and and obviously, like the Marvel fandom is is pretty intense. And but but yeah, One Piece, I, it's like it's it's amazing. It's really it's amazing. You earn it. You definitely earn it. Crazy. Absolutely. Hello. How we doing? Uh, hi there. Uh, my name is Jonathan. Um, I hope you're having a great day so far. Hope you are too, man. You're awesome. So um, this is for Jeff. I just want to say you did a great job as Buggy in the live action One Piece. Thank and you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Your show also filmed next to my other favorite show, Warrior. Great show. Yes, we shared a lot of crew and cast with Warrior. Another oh, yeah. good show, yes. So you you just explained like how much you loved playing Buggy and what your favorite part of playing him at is. Um, just want to say, um, a friend of mine said I was also like Michael Scott, and I just want to know, what was it like filming with Anaki, McKenna, Emily, who was, I met her brother in November, by the way. What was it like filming with all those amazing cast members? Um, my first question, you've seen The Office. Yep. So is this a friend that said you were like Michael Scott? <laughs> I just, uh, I'm joking. Friend of me? I, no, I'm yeah. joking, I'm joking. I love Michael Scott. I'd be friends with him. Um, I, uh... I, th those people are all the greatest, and and um, filming with Inyaki was um, particularly special because he's a wonderful actor and a really uh, um, kind and generous person, and um, I really think absolutely nailed Luffy, which is such a what an iconically difficult right. thing like to come in and try and do and I think he did such a good job and he really I, like the other thing is like when you are, are that kind of character the amount of hours that goes into doing something like that is like you know 16 hours a day for five days a week for 12, 13, 14 months. Wow. And it's like, it's just such a tremendous to be able to be that guy through all of that, it, you know, on and off the court. 
is um, it's really he's fantastic, and as is all of them, everyone is like that. So it's just particular weight on Inyaki's shoulders that I think he carried really well. Very well, indeed. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Warrior season four, everybody. Hey, yeah. hey guys. Hello. Hey. Uh, to Mike. Um, Last couple of weeks has been very tough with Akira Toriyama's passing. So my question to you is, what does the Dragon Ball franchise uh, mean to you? Ooh. Um, Dragon Ball, uh, and yes, uh, rest in peace, uh, Akira Toriyama. Uh, taken far too soon. Um, for me, that was my, I, I, I've been acting a long time. I started acting like second or third grade, uh, theater productions, things like that. Uh, I did commercial VO and things like that. Uh, Dragon Ball was the first anime that I was ever cast in. Uh, silly me, no, no idea in the 90s, uh, casting this thing like, oh, this is work that I really enjoy, it's kind of fun. No idea that it was going to be giant worldwide phenomenon sort of thing. Um, Along with the world of Dragon Ball just being really fascinating, really interesting, uh, it's also, uh, that's my home for this type of work. That is where I got my start. Um, I have been voicing Roshi and a few other characters since 1997. Thank you. Um, and even if the series isn't going on, there's some game, right. there's something going on. I have been every year working on that character since 1997 wow. and uh, that's such a gift for for acting in general of course. you know unless you're in you know cats and you're doing cats for 50 years on broadway or something <laughs> but, you know but like uh that's such a huge gift so as of the many things that dragon ball could mean to me it's been in my life longer uh than it's not been in my life it's taken up it's encompassed more of my life than the part before right. it so uh, it is a huge uh, part of my life, and I'm very, very grateful uh, and blessed that it is part of my life. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. I have a question for both of you. It's if you could have anybody on your pirate crew, who would it be? Ooh. Ooh. Like in the whole world, or from the One Piece universe, or just on the One Piece? Universe. Okay. Okay. You were gonna say Goku, weren't you? <laughs> it's cheating. It's cheating. The Beyonder. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, let's see from the from the world of One Piece, who I would like on my crew. Um, for for the giggles, for the laughs, for the strength, I'll pick Frankie. Okay, all right. I'm gonna say who? Uh, I'll say Luffy because I think it'd be funny if he worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll play. We'll play. Wait before you go. Who would you? The one person you would put on your pirate crew? La Ooh. Can't go wrong. Okay. Good pick. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I have a question for both of you. So, um, whether behind the scenes or on scene, what's your favorite scene to do? Favorite scene? Go ahead. Oh. Uh, I don't know if we need to pick <laughs> I don't know if I had a favorite scene. I'll just say my the favorite arc that I have. Uh, my favorite arc as Buggy is Impel Down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So fun, so fun. Uh, my favorite arc, because uh, I was one of the voice directors and I definitely directed a whole bunch of this uh, segment of it, was Water 7 Annie's Lobby. Because yes. it's super heart stringy, super like, this is how much we very care, emotional. this is how much we're willing to give. Right. Um, and it was just very emotional. Awesome. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Um, I, I would have to go with um, capturing and torturing Luffy. <laughs> was that was like I know all of these answers are about Luffy <laughs> making fun of him, but I really um, that was so fun and so um, just like filming in the tent. And we had a few hundred extras, and like it felt really. Uh, kind of epic and, and, and Yaki was so good and, and the sparring between us. It feels so indicative of the spirit of the show and also the spirit of like every, we talked a lot about like, I feel like there's like a very Luke and Vader mm. kind of relationship between the two of them um, that is so fun. I just find it so fun 
that he, Luffy specifically, he hates him so much. <laughs> and like, that is such a fun thing to play as an actor. It's great. That's awesome. Love that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My buggy is Richard and Michael Scott, and Luffy is his Toby. <laughs> I just realized that. I just thought of these, like, Jeez. shut up, Luffy. Shush, shush. No HR for you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I was just wondering for both of you, uh, what was your, without getting too much into spoiler territory, what was your reaction to it, not to the relationship of Shanks and Buggy not really being shown in the backstory of why Buggy particularly uh, hates him, the perceived backstory. What was your reaction to that not being shown in the live action? To both of you, I guess. I, well, I don't know that it won't ever be in the live action. I say that like I don't know. I do, really don't know. Yeah. But I, I, it's, I um, had a lot of conversations with Matt before I was filming because I was like, I can't watch a thousand episodes before we start filming, so I need to know everything about Buggy. And that had kind of just come out very recently <laughs> when we were filming it, like two years ago or whatever. And I was like, that it's, it's stuff like that that is so important that for me is like, that is flowing through all of, especially that uh, the episode with me and him in the tent, it's like everything in realizing who this guy is, like it's all about that moment and that scene and what happens between them. So for me, that's like so essential to understanding who he is. It's why he's this sad loser. His only friend is like, you know, doesn't, you know. So it's, I, I don't want to spoil it either, but, but anyway, point being, I think it's a very important scene that I would imagine would probably happen at some point, hopefully with me, just pretending to be a child, just <laughs> with a beard. Like the Howard Stern Private yeah, Parts. Yeah, that's thing. exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. That's a good that's one. Exactly that's right. good one. <laughs> Thank you. I do think that there is like a, a difficulty when there is such a longevity of the original series. Um, when you're trying to distill it down to the live action, you have to pick like where where do we go and where don't we go? Where mm -hmm. do we reserve? Um, and that's always going to be a difficult balance to kind of pick. So kudos to um, the entire team for picking things that were working and still leaving things for us to kind of still talk about. And not only things to talk about, but just someone you know like I'm going to continue consuming the live action. Exactly. It's great. Um, because of that type of format, man, it can go in anywhere. Exactly. You're exactly. just saying, well, like, it, it could be it could be down the line. Yeah, and yeah, that's what I find very exciting about the future of the show, because Matt is such a diehard One Piece fan that in a way you have to pick it, right. not in a way, in every way, you have to pick and choose. Right. So I think in that way there's so much amazing stuff to choose from that Matt will get to really do, like, a greatest hits nice. Nice. kind of thing. Good. So awesome. I think. I have not talked to him. Just one more really quick question for Jeff specifically. Uh, what was the meaning behind the somebody's jealous line? Because I know a certain part of people on Twitter got really excited about that. So S somebody's jealous? When, uh, in the live action, when he says it to Zoro. When oh, right. <laughs> well, yeah, because anyone who's more famous than him in any way is like threatening so that's like he has to be the coolest guy in the room always so he's gonna try to take down and make fun of people that are obviously cooler than him thank you thank, thank, you. You. thank you hello hi uh, my name is shelby um, and honestly after jeff hearing everything you have to say about luffy considering changing my costume so thank you you should <laughs> <laughs> But my question is specifically for Mike. So, Jeff, loved you in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., gotta say. Okay, no, I appreciate it. Absolutely. I'll Absolutely. shut my mic off for the rest of the... <laughs> Love hearing you talk, but this is for Mike. <laughs> um, Mike, as you said, along with One Piece, you were doing Dragon Ball, and you're also John Kirstein in Attack on Titan. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. So, one of my favorite characters, like Sasha, Jean, Cotty. Um, that's true. But my question is, like, having something like One Piece, Dragon Ball, Attack on Titan, like, these are huge projects that you have going on, and being able to balance your characters, you know, and not, like, you know, you probably have an attachment to each character, but, like, making sure when you go in and you start recording, like, 
your Jean when you go in there or your buggy or your master Roshi. So the process behind that, like, you know, what's that like for you? Um, I guess it's it's kind of twofold, and thank you. That's very nice of you to say all those nice things. Um, uh, twofold uh, on the technical end. Thankfully, um, we live in an era where we can revisit something. Uh, please play what I did last time. Please play my audition file. Please play the first couple of episodes of this and let me hear it. And if it's a character that grows on screen or whatever, let me hear the first stuff and let me hear the last stuff. With something like Buggy, with something like Roshi, uh, I don't need it. I've, it's been too long, it's right there at any given time. And anyone who's come up to my table can probably tell you that too. Like, he just went right into it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, they just sit right there. Um, uh, the other side of it, the non-technical side of it would be, they're all individuals and they're in their own worlds. So they all feel different. They're all different people. Um, and I try to uh, channel who the person is. I try to, you know, uh, I try to honor what I see on screen, and I try to be that person when I'm recording, not just uh, I'm throwing out interesting sounding words with a, with a character voice or something. I try to go through the emotional state of everything that's going on. If, uh, if Jean is crying and very emotional, I want to come out of the booth, my, my, the neck of my t-shirt's going to be all wet, and I'm going to be sad. Uh, I, I try to give an honest performance of everything that I'm doing. Uh, be it for anime, be it stage, be it whatever. So that also helps me a lot, is that I, in my head, I treat them as different people. Awesome, thank you. Um, yeah. Attack on Titan season four, part two, had me like broken, so thank you. Um, <laughs> and both of you guys, thank you so much for like your amazing work. You're beyond talented, so thank you so much. Thank you for this very kind of Thank you, absolutely. I gotta warn everybody, we're within, we're within the last 10 minutes, so if it's cool with you guys, mm -hmm. um, for those folks that don't get to ask their question, mm -hmm. can we invite them to line up around the stage here? We do a selfie with them? Can yeah. we do that? Sure. Yeah. All right, bet. So if you don't get to ask and your question, I be a part of it. You're gonna wait. <laughs> can you be a part of it? You're yes. getting to ask a question. Like, come on. Go for it. What's your question? For first and foremost, hello again, Jeff. Hello again, Mike. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yeah, so for my question, for Mike. Do you ever let your one of your voices slip out in real life? Like, for example, if you were to go to a cashier and she's all like, that'll be $200, sir. And then you're like, you see... And I just, and I just decide, no, I should not pay that. Yeah, um, it's been paid for. Yeah. I just don't have the money yet. You see, I'm going to be king of the pirates, so you're going to have to pay never. Do you do that? I tend not to do that. Tend not to. That's Frankly, not a no, though. That's not a no. No, it's not. I, uh, what I will say is for like for characters like Jean from Attack on Titan, Ojiro from My Hero Academia, Amon from Tokyo Ghoul, and stuff like that. That kind of just they sound like me. Um, they live in a world where it's much less charactery than sure. than a Master Roshi or a Buggy would be. Um, some people might recognize that if they're listening really closely. Like I had someone at uh, a local movie theater. I went in and I was like, hey, you want to take it to Bubble Bomb? And they just like stared at me for a second. They're like, are you Jean from Attack on Titan? <laughs> I'm like, I, yes. what? <laughs> I, I do play him. <laughs> no, I'm Mike. <clears throat> I'm Mike. And, and in an instance of that particular thing, they're like, awesome, good job. Just take this ticket. <laughs> I'm like, you're the coolest. You should always pay. I mean, that's, that's the way it should be. But yeah, it's, uh, I, I don't bust out into the, the Roshi voice, the buggy voice, anything like that. Uh, uh, what I will say, I don't do it. My friend Monica Rial does it, and I think it's brilliant. If she happens to pick up the phone and it's a cold call salesman, she will pretend like she's six years old or something like that. And for those of you that know her, it's totally believable. She, she could do a six-year-old. And she's like, I don't know where my dad is. I haven't seen him in four days, or just things like that. Send help to the house. That's awful. <laughs> for, awful funny. Yeah, so for Jeff, uh, when you were doing the tiny buggy scene, was there ever a deleted scene where he has to fend himself off on an island full of monsters? Um, fend himself off from what? Uh, giant monsters. Giant um, monsters. Oh, that's, that's what I thought you said. Yeah, d yes. Yeah, there's a, and I'm fighting them off, and it's like, and it's a, it was expensive. But I cursed in it a lot, mm -hmm. so they had to cut it. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. 
I had, I was, you and me both, brother. Yeah. <laughs> On the deleted scenes YouTube. <laughs> true or false? Is it true that you beat Inaki as many times in uh, FIFA? True. He wishes he could hang. <laughs> Question from Mike. Whoa, 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 whoa. you got like okay, eight wait, questions, wait, wait, but there's wait, like an entire wait, line of people behind you, so we need you to step away from the microphone. Can I be in the selfie at least? <laughs> Only if you leave right now. Sure. There we go. <laughs> Done. <laughs> so, good to so. <laughs> Hi, so my question is for both of you guys. Mm -hmm. um, with the Netflix live action season two being announced officially, Jeff, is there something you are looking forward to coming up? And Mike, if you could have a cameo in it, what would you love to do? Great question. <laughs> wow, that's great. Please, will you be in it? That'd be so fun. Man, if I could do anything, I think that'd be so fun. Yeah, that'd for be sure. Great. Um, I, I mean, I'm just hoping to get to Impel Down whenever that is. I hope that happens. Classic. And Mike? Uh, I would love to do anything if I could Two be buggies? in the show. Two buggies. Yes. <laughs> I'd be like, what the? Buggy. <laughs> Buggyception. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello. Hi, guys. Uh, you're both very talented. You work with tons of talented people. Um, and you're both in separate streams, one for acting and one for voiceover. I'm just wondering if either of you have any advice for talented people coming up in the industry to help them break out and get to do cool stuff like Great question. Um... The answers that are, you know, right there for us, uh, study acting, uh, for, for uh, study improv, I think it's very important to have that skill set uh, for voice acting in, in general. Voice and diction comes in super handy, comes in handy on stage on camera too, but like, that's what I'm throwing out there. Uh, additionally, for voice acting, uh, D. Bradley Baker has a website that's mm -hmm. called IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. It's very easy to find because <laughs> it's just that sentence. Um, he uh, has gathered a lot of information about um, what to study, um, if you're working from home, what kind of gear you want, mm -hmm. uh, where auditions might be, all these sorts of things. It's the most valuable resource, far more than coming up and talking to me for 10 or 15 minutes, even at my table. That's something you can always go to, and it's always updated, and he is on it. Like, that is a great, great resource. Uh, so yeah, study acting, improv, um, Every, there, there's so many things that are out of your hands. If you can do the things that are within your hands, the studying and the training, you're going to be ready when the things that are out of your hands happen to you. I think that's a very good answer. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think study like for acting, like yeah, I think studying it is really important. It's really, um, it just yeah, I, I totally agree. It's it's for for when you do get the opera like. Getting to do buggy, like I, I've studied a lot of Shakespeare, and I've studied, you know, I've done a lot of that stuff, and it really came in handy, even in such a ridiculous. I was thinking about um, Adam's Family the mm -hmm. other day is a mm -hmm. weird reference, but um, I love that movie, and Raúl Julia, brilliant, who's like so genius Absolutely. as as Gomez. He was a spectacular Shakespearean actor, mm -hmm. and he was a classically trained, and like. And when you see, I was thinking about now his family values when he comes to get Fester and he's like, I want my brother. And it's like so ridiculous, <laughs> but it's incredible. It's yes. like, and it's really like surf, uh, uh, um, kind of transferring like that kind of, and I did that a lot with Buggy. Like mm -hmm. when I, we were talking a lot about when I held Shanks' his hat up um, and we were looking at it and to Mark Job's credit, who was the, um, director of the episode we like put it dead center of the spotlight and we were like i was kind of like it's like hamlet's yeah, skull exactly. like you know it's the same oh, sort of it, we, and getting to like draw on that is just an improv i think is awesome if you can get into that and most importantly i think make your own stuff absolutely that is like because not good. only does it give you a chance to just so much of acting on on camera is technical and like you don't know there's not enough places that teach that so it's kind of like just doing it on your own iphones are crazy cameras sure. so like i think make stuff is my main thing cool that's definitely my next step thanks guys absolutely great thank, thank you man unfortunately we have hit the time but i'm gonna have you guys that are in line right now come on up here and you're gonna line up right in front of the stage 
everyone shout your question at the same time. <laughs> 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 yeah. You guys all have to answer it at once. All right, go ahead, you guys can line up right here. Those folks that are sitting down, you guys can stand up, get in this picture too. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much.